So how do we prevent injection attacks? So basically, whenever we are generating output that we're going to use to send somewhere else for further processing, so to avoid any kind of structured output vulnerability, we need to do careful um, validation of the inputs that we're um, accepting into our code. We need to make sure that we are um, like escaping and sanitizing what's what we're using so that we're using it in a safe way um, at, at all the different levels where the where it's being used essentially um, but there are obviously some important points um, to that we need to get right um, but yeah any user controlled data that includes URL parameters form fields um, from like post requests headers cookies file names just anything the user supplies we need to be really careful with. Um, for JavaScript, the thing that we want to make sure is we want to be extra careful that we're not going to interpret any of it as JavaScript. And for SQL, when we're doing database queries, we want to make sure that the user can't change the logic of the query itself and they can't basically insert into the query in a way that their input is going to be considered part of the query, uh, the logic of the query. Um, that's not an easy task because you know, we're often where we receive data and we transform it multiple times before we use it. So to be really careful about it. Um, clever attacks will trick the interpreter parser into executing commands, potentially attack, uh, taking advantage of multiple layers of transforms to, to data. For example, you might code something that removes um, like script tags and um, removes um, swear words uh, for example um it would be a bad you know bad way of doing it because if you removed if you had a um you know a tag that said script and then like a swear word and an angular bracket um or a swear word in the middle of the word script or something you might remove stuff and you'd end up with the word script again um and so we, you know we need to be careful that we're escaping carefully um, and sanitizing carefully. So validation is not enough. So you know people actually have inverted commas in their name. So like Jack O'Neill, for example, um, should be allowed to register for a website because you know an inverted comma is actually found in people's names. Um, but we need to make sure that we don't interpret it like that in the SQL query. Um, so you know there's there's a few things to consider here and the. One of them is that there are multiple places where you can do this escaping and sanitization. So you can do it at the point in which the user supplies the input to the server, for example. So you, the server could say, oh, okay, so no, you're not allowed that, and strip it out. Or it might escape it and say, okay, you are allowed it, but we'll make sure that we escape that when we use it. Um, so we could escape it at the point in which it, um, we receive it as the server, or at the which point we render it to the user. So we can just keep whatever is the user supplies. And then, but every time that we want to display it to the user, we need to be careful to make sure that we're escaping it at that point. Uh, and that's how a lot of websites will work. So the user can enter in um, something like a Angular bracket, it's fine, but we'll just make sure that it doesn't get rendered as, um, you know, an angular bracket in the source code it gets rendered as like ampersand um, greater than um, semicolon so that it gets sent along as the HTML equivalent um, and so yeah so, so there's a few points and then obviously there's also within the browser the client itself it can be good for the client ex experience the user experience to be told when they're trying to put something in no you're not allowed to do that instead of um, you know finding out later that they weren't allowed like you know, the things not being displayed how they expect it. <clears throat> so yeah, use escaping and consider exactly how that information is used, and make sure that's you know being escaped safely. So in order to do prevention, we have like a layered defense inside the browser. We can do client side validation by itself. It's not enough because an attacker can just circumvent anything that's on the client side. Um, within the application, so within the web ser server, within the website itself. We can do web, web um, side 
uh, like server-side validation there. So make sure that the thing that they've sent is okay. We're going to accept it. We can do filtering to um, just remove things. Um, so we can just remove inverted commas. Um, or instead, we can do escaping so that whenever we've got an inverted comma, we convert it to a safe um, method. Um, and that could be, you know, as I said before, when we're saving it to the database or um, more often than not, when it's being rendered to the user, when it's being sent back out, you have to be careful it's being, um, you know, filtered or escaped at that point um, or sanitized in some way, um, you know, such as filtering and escaping to make sure the thing that's being sent is safe for use. Within the database, we can have privilege restrictions to make sure that um, when something does go wrong, there's like a restriction on what can happen. Usually, um, a web server, like a website, will have full access to the database used for that website. Um, but it is possible to set up databases um, so that you have database users that have different levels of access. Um, the most common way that you see that is when you've got multi-tenant. So you've got a single server with multiple websites being hosted. So each website just gets access to its own database on that server. Um, it is possible to set it up to be more fine-grained than that, but that's usually what you see. Uh, and you can use stored procedures in the database so that you um, basically have the query sort of ready to go on the server side rather than it being constructed each time. Uh, within the code um, of the website itself. So some of the things that you can do to prevent um, you know, these injection attacks is to do source code review. So wherever there's any user data um, being used in a dynamic way, we look carefully at the code. Um, we can do automated testing of all the inputs. So we can do things like static analysis, um, which are basically tools that will analyze the source code to look for um, problems. We can do dynamic analysis or, or um, testing, like fuzz testing. Uh, and there are a number of fuzz test tools that we can use on websites. And that includes things like SQL map, has a fuzzer built into it. And um, OWASP Zap, for example, or Burp Suite, all have fuzzing capabilities so that you can um, throw stuff at, at um, inputs. So like if there is <clears throat> a place where a user can, can input to a website, you can fire up a fuzzer and attempt to just send a whole bunch of stuff to it. Um, that is inputs that are designed to trigger and uh, to discover um, you know, different kinds of injections like SQL injections and so on. You can um, use say, safe APIs. So most platforms have a parameterized database interface that's available. So you should use that. Um, parameterized query rather than building queries in a string. So, um, you know, if you're doing a database query, you should use the, um, the actual um, parameterized input where you can basically say, this is the logic part of my query and these are the variables that I want it to pull from. Uh, and therefore, that will automatically escape things um, to prevent the attacker from, um, you know, doing the wrong thing there. Um, avoid using external interpreters. So rather than making dynamic shell commands, you could call libraries to do those things. Rather than you know, sending the user input to bash, you should try and do achieve the same things but using like um, libraries that are, that are designed to actually solve do those specific behaviors rather than sending it as a command if you can. Um, you know, you can, you know, it's, there are, ways that you can do it. You just have to be really careful to make sure that you're escaping things um, correctly or just avoid using the user input um, if you can. So yeah, stored queries, stored procedures. So you can put SQL code that's pre-written and stored in the database itself. Uh, you can use server-side whitelists for valid input or allow lists. So rather than um, trying to like have a block list of things that you don't allow. You should have a list of things that you do allow because it's safer. Um, use escaping to render the input harmless. Uh, it's not perfect because escaping can break when transformed or inc incorrectly applied, so you need to be careful. Um, 
Use limiting queries to prevent mass disclosure of records. So if you add limit one to the end of your query, if you're actually only expecting one thing to ever come back, then if they can inject into it, but you've limited it to one result, then that can make things life a lot more difficult for the attacker, even if they are able to um, you know, modify your query. <clears throat> you know, and more broadly also, you can use um, modern frameworks to build your websites and to build your software because they, you know, can have protections built in that can, um, you know, make it a bit safer to do these things. Um, and there's a reason we use um, PHP uh, as the, and, and C in our examples for insecure code because it is so easy to write insecure PHP, especially if you're not building on frameworks. If you're just writing pure PHP, very easy to end up with, um, uh, you know, all these kinds of security problems. If you build on um, frameworks like Ruby on Rails, for example, there are a lot of um, a lot of this escaping and stuff sort of comes for free as part of the default behavior. And in fact, you have to do the opposite and say, "This, you, I don't want you to escape this." Uh, and that's obviously a safer way to design the code. Um, so, parameterized queries. So, you the the SQL is defined first, and then dynamic dynamic variables get uh, values get passed in. And then the interpreter can tell the difference between the code and the data. Um, and poor escaping um, can happen um, where you use the wrong kind of escaping for the wrong context. So SQLi real escape, escape string is only secure in a literal single quote context. So if you use it in a um, not in a single quote context, then it's still insecure it won't help you uh, further defenses <clears throat> use database users and privileges don't use a root account for accessing databases from a website um, you know you don't see it as often anymore but it used to be quite a default um, setting um, each website should have its own users with access to specific tables if that's possible or at least each website access to um, just the database for that website. Database views can create a way of granting access to parts of a database. Don't store sensitive data in plain text. So it's things like passwords, make sure you're using encryption and hashes to store the passwords so that if someone does get them, at least they still have to like crack the passwords. And if people have strong passwords, that might be impractical. Um, don't display detailed database errors to users. Uh, and things like web application firewalls can add an extra layer of security because it will um, filter out attacks before they hit the, the database potentially. So in conclusion, uh, command injection vulnerabilities, it's really easy programming mistake to make and it has massive security consequences. Uh, and so hope you found that interesting. It is. You know, that is an, some insight to a huge category of security vulnerability. Um, so it's really worth getting your head around that because, you know, this applies for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and SQL injection, command injection. These are, along with memory management vulnerabilities, um, you know, these are the most common security vulnerabilities you find. Certainly the most common that there are and, um, you know, huge in websites. These things are unfortunately all the time because it's so easy to make the mistakes.